Hello there, my name's Michelle and I am the designer behind Dora Does. You can find me on doradoes.co.uk. I design a lot of crochet garments, wearables, all that kind of thing. And I'm particularly interested in construction and different ways to approach wearables. So I'm really excited to be here at the Garment Summit again this year. Today, I'm gonna to talk to you about crochet ribbing and how you can use it in garments. So I'm gonna discuss what ribbing is and then talk about some of the styles that you can use and I'm going to share my top five and show you lots of examples. Before I get into the depths about ribbing though I want to take a moment just to talk a bit about um, stitch selection in crochet garments because it's a really valuable concept to understand if you're going to be crocheting garments and especially if you like to freestyle a bit and use your own choice of stitches. You'll often hear about designers from all walks of design talk about form versus function and this is as true in crochet design as it is anywhere else if not more so so you know people use it let's say when you're designing a chair you want a chair to have a beautiful form you want to be pretty you also want to be able to sit on it comfortably so that's the two kind of features when you're looking at any design so when i'm thinking about a crochet design i think about what the purpose of the item is and how it's going to look and how those two features can work together. So that's the same for any crochet pattern, whether it's as simple as a scarf or whether it's a complex cardigan. So let's say, for example, I want to design a crochet hat and it uses a beautiful crochet stitch, lovely texture, looks amazing, but you put it on and it falls off your head, then it's not fit for purpose. There's no function so the form might be their function not so much conversely if you had a, a hat that like cling to your head for dear life it was never going anywhere but it looked ugly it's going to sit in a drawer so this is what i mean about getting those two balanced out if you can have both that's great there's a famous william morris quote um that says have nothing in your house that you do not consider to be useful or beautiful i might have paraphrased it a bit there but it, you get the point it's it's functional and or beautiful. I like to do both, but it's not always possible. Actually, it almost is always possible. Scrap that. Okay, the, the point I'm trying to get at is that when you select your crochet stitches for design, it's really important to think about these two aspects up front. So in crochet garments, you might think of it as um, drape versus structure so you could choose stitches that create a beautiful drape that flow nicely if you want like a, a floaty top for example and um, you generally have lots of spaces between the stitches versus something much more structured so you know this is this uh, sweater dress is somewhere in between it, it's kind of got movement but more structure versus something that really is quite structured. I mean, you might look at something like a washcloth that's made in you know, tight single crochet, that's gonna be quite a dense um, fabric that doesn't move. And that has properties that can be really useful. So this is where we get into ribbing because ribbing is uh, one of those crochet stitches that is great at providing structure, function, and also form. As always, I like to start with a definition. So what is ribbing? In terms of crochet garments, you can define ribbing as alternating high and low columns of fabric. It's usually worn vertically like this, so vertical, horizontal, horizontal, horizon. I'm going to be talking horizontal and vertical there, so let's throw some of those definitions in too. So usually the lines are parallel and it creates this, this nice texture, but it also creates function in a garden, garment. Um, it's frequently added to cuffs, necklines, hems, um, ankle cuffs on socks or, or mittens. Hat bands is a very common one. Um, and what it does there, and the reason it's so commonly used, is because it adds strength to those areas. Because often, you know, with a cuff, this is going to get a lot more pulled about than maybe this section. Likewise, if you're pulling something over your head, it's going to move. So adding uh, ribbing that adds strength is a good way to kind of protect that and keep shape in your garment. Um, if you think in terms of the structure, think about your, your rib cage, which I'm assuming is where the, um, the, the term ribbing actually originates. But you know, this is providing structure, protect all your internal organs. So ribbing 
can be elastic and or stretchy and I'm going to go back to the definitions of those two in, in a minute but if you think about the most common example of where you know we've probably all used ribbing is in a, a brim on a hat what you want that ribbing to do is to stretch so the hat fits on your head because generally hats are constructed with negative ease which means the hat itself is smaller than your head so negative ease means the item created is smaller than the body part that it's meant to fit so things like hats and socks and often um sometimes gloves or mittens are made with negative ease if you want a, a sweater that's really tight smaller than your body so it stretches when you put it on that's negative ease so yeah you want um the property of the fabric to have negative ease so it stretches to fit in your head but you also want it to snap back so it holds it on your head if you have something that stretches out to fit on your head but then you take it off and it stays stretched it's just going to stretch more and more over time so that's how i differentiate for the purposes of crochet elasticity and stretch so stretch is something that you know pulls out increases in size elasticity has stretch but it also has that snap back so it will go back to the shape that it started on. I think it's important to think about that when you're thinking about the functionality of ribbing because if it is just stretch or it has a little stretch it's not going to add that grip and when I show you some examples I'll show you some elasticity versus stretch examples. So as a designer elasticity is something I think about a lot probably more than I should um, because it, it can be really useful for me to to help to have things fit the way I envisage the design to do. Um, on the other side, so with your function, you've got stretch and elasticity as the really key properties of ribbing. On the other side, you've got form. So there are so many rib stitches that look beautiful, but don't necessarily always have stretch. So you can, you can use them as a decorative uh, stitch pattern. You know, they look great. I love how a lot of the the non-stretchy crochet rib stitches look um, but it's just being aware of what each stitch is going to do for you if it you know a lot of them have stretch elasticity actually not a lot of them don't have stretch elasticity and beauty but a lot of them have beauty a lot of them have beauty and stretch and the, the unicorns have all three so let's get into how to actually crochet rib stitches um, I just had to get the little theory be out of my bonnet so I feel like we're all starting from the same place now. So there's three really common ways that you can crochet ribbing and there's lots of derivations of all of those three. So the first one is working usually in the back loops but in working in different loops to where you'd typically work. You've probably all worked a half double crochet in the back loop only. That seems to be um, certainly where I started to learn ribbing that or a single crochet in the back loop only. Um, you can also create rib stitches by working in different loops. So um, the, the third loop, which can be at the front or back of stitches, I'll talk about that in a little bit. So that's number one, um, back loops. Number two is using slip stitches. So you can combine slip stitches with back loops or you can um, work a slip stitch through both loops and, and create a rib by pushing the top of the stitch forward. Again, I'll show you some examples of that when we come to it. And the third common way to crochet ribbing is to use post stitches or raised stitches if you uh, are used to UK terms. So this is where you work around the post of a stitch. If it's front post, what that will do is it will pull the stitch below away from the fabric and that's what creates that um, uh, raised bar so uh, crochet post stitches are often also used to create cabling so essentially with ribbing with crochet post stitches you're creating little cables um, that line up parallel to each other now the other thing and I said I'll come back to that is to talk about cro crochet ribbing that is created either horizontally or vertically so Although crochet ribbing is generally worn on the vertical, uh, like this sweater dress, um, it's usually crocheted horizontally. And by that, I mean you create the raised rib by working across horizontal rows. So I've got a little example here 
So this is single crochet worked in the back loop only. And you create the ribbing by working in rows. So that is on the horizontal. So that's what I mean when I talk about horizontal stitches. When I wear it, I will usually turn it like that. So if it's a if it's a hat brim, for example, you kind of work it like that, but you're turning it at 90 degrees so the ribs fall vertically. So the majority, I would say, of crochet rib stitches are worked horizontally like that. The difference is when you look at post stitches which are stacked on top of each other. So there's, there's two ways to use post stitches in ribbing and I, I will come to that, but this is an example. This is a front post half double crochet alternated with a back, back post half double crochet. Um, just so you know, I've got a full tutorial with all of these um, swatches showing you how to uh, crochet each stitch. So I'll, I'll pop a link to that because I'm going to be showing you a few of these swatches shortly. So just so you, you know, you can go away and find out how to make them afterwards. So you can see the rows here are worked like this. So that you work your rows on the horizontal, but the rib forms vertically, like down that way. So this is what I call vertical ribbing. I hope that's clear. So with all that in mind, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to share, share with you my, theoretically my five favourite types of rib stitch, but I'm going to show you some of the, the derivations and I've got some examples to show you there as well of how they look in garments. So first off, I've already mentioned this, is the half double crochet and the back loop only. This um, this is the winter solstice, winter solstice sweater dress. Um, which is made almost entirely out of um, half double crochet in the back loop only. Um, it does have shaping and um, you can't really see it. You can probably see it if I just show you on the side. So you can work shaping into your ribbing. This uses the short row shaping for the, I hope you can see that, for the hip section and on the sleeves as well. So ribbing can be versatile enough to use as a pattern all over a garment rather than just the edges and that's kind of why I wanted to show you this one. So this is my swatch. You can see it it stretches out quite a lot. This has been pulled about a bit, this this swatch. Um, it does have a reasonable amount of elect elasticity, not electricity, um, and that's why it's commonly used for uh, hat bands and cuffs and so forth. It's also really I find it anyway really enjoyable and it's just quite easy to make it's not too fiddly um, I've already shown you this but this is the single crochet back loop only method which creates if you look at the two together it's kind of a more dense um, rib on that one again this has probably got a little bit more elasticity because I think the stitches are shorter but if you pull anything too much it will go out of shape so as well as working the back loops, there are other loops. And one of my favourite um, ribbing stitches to work is again in half double crochet, but it's working in the front third loop. So under the top loops of your half double, there's there's a third loop. I've got, again, if you have a look at the video tutorial, I go into depth detail about how to do this and I show you where the loop is. Um, but it creates a really nice, rib it's the same on both sides because you're just working rows the same it's not really as stretchy as the other it kind of the stitches are more attached so it's a bit solid which means it's a little bit more decorative that said i've used it in a few patterns recently so this is my um hood in a snood pattern and i've used the stitch uh, here and this is not really a functional ribbing that i've used it for here it's much more decorative um, but you can see it's a really nice um, pattern it helps that this yarn is lovely um, I also use that same stitch pattern so this is the version of the any yarn will do cardigan that I made in last year's Cal and I made some adjustments and I popped that same stitch on the cuff and the, the button band of this cardigan um, and on the, the hem too. I really like it. I've I've made the cuffs quite long. Um, you can see I've been wearing this, it's starting to bobble a bit. Um, but I really like it and I've used a smaller hook. So with ribbing, if you want it to be a bit tighter, I often recommend going down a hook size to what you're working the rest of the garment. 
you can also do ribbing working in the back third loop and I talk about that in um, the tutorial which has like 11, 11 or 12 different rib stitches that you can work. So the next type of ribbing that I love, we're going to talk about slip stitches now and here we have, this is slip stitch worked in the back loop only, row on row on row on row on row and you can see it's quite dense but it has such good elasticity. So this is a teeny little swatch. So um, it can be a bit fiddly, but once you start getting the zone with rib stitches, I really like them. Not rib stitches. Well, I like rib stitches, but slip stitches. So this is the Fisherman's Winter Beanie Hat, and this uses um, rib stitches throughout. I have worn this. I mean, you can see it's bubbling and it's got my hair on it. Um, I've worn this about like three winters the last three years and here's a confession I haven't sewn the ends in so this is this is the double knit version of that hat it comes in three different yarn weights but you can see this is a four ply one and you can see how much stretch it is but this has the elasticity so it kind of you know you can pull it around and it's really good at keeping its shape like I say I have worn this to death over the last three years and it's still kept it shape it's not stretched out the size so I'm a huge fan I know a lot of people don't like crocheting slip stitch ribbing because it is time consuming I'm not going to lie about that but for me the outcome is worth it in certain cases now I wanted to talk before I go on about different ways that slip stitches can be used so this um this is the Coventina Coventina cardigan which apologies it's a spring cardigan so it's been in a drawer but I have used this actually uses um linked crochet stitches alternating with slip stitches so you can see the little rib on there um this this line that is where the slip stitches again this has worked in the back loop but when you work a slip stitch around both loops you're pushing that forward so sometimes what you can do is you can work a slip stitch through the top two loops it pushes it forward and then when you work the next row you kind of work back into the slip stitch so the the two loops that have been pushed forward that is what creates the ribbing the other reason I wanted to show you this is I wanted to show you that rib stitch rib stitch doesn't always have to be straight lines so this is you know it's a ribbed fabric but it's obviously got the the wave in as well so um, and actually it has a really interesting pattern on the other side when you are working rib stitches that don't use the same stitch pattern row on row it's not going to be reversible so the front and back are going to look different in this case I kind of like I like both sides of this this cardigan so the last one I'm going to talk about is post stitches so I've got two examples here first we're going to have another look at these swatches. This is the front and back post. So this alternates front post double crochet and back post double crochet. So this looks great. You can see it's a really dense fabric. Um, if you want structure and like warmth, because this is really thick. So a lot of people like this for cuffs or mittens, for example, but there's not much, there's not really much elasticity in this. Um, I I love how it looks. I actually don't have any patterns to show you because generally when I'm working with post stitches, I use them for kind of cable. So I use them for that decorative and texture effect rather than stretch. This is front and back post half double. So this is, if you look, these are the same number of rows. So you can see um, the difference there. I really like the half double. I think it's a really got some bulk to it um, so I really like that again this is where you're looking for structure um, so that is front and back post stitches the other way that it's common to use post stitches is that so this is the uh, vertical ribbing that I was talking about um, you can also use front and back post stitches to create horizontal ribbing and this is another one that I love for the decorative look so again there's there's almost no stretch in this. This is front post single crochet. So if you look close, you can kind of see these lovely, almost knit look type ribs that it creates. 
on this swatch I've just done a normal single crochet at the end of the, each row so that's why it's got that little border um, but I really love this as a rib stitch again I wouldn't use this for a hat band I would use this for something that I actually don't want to stretch so for example something like a cuff I think this could look nice if you don't want it to, to stretch out of shape I don't know how it would wear over time but um yeah, I wouldn't want it. This isn't an elastic. This isn't a make a hat stay on your head stitch because I don't think it would. So this is just rows of front post single. This is rows of front post half double. So again, you can see that's got a bit more depth to it. Um, if you want something with it, you know, cushioning, this is great. And then this is front, sorry, this was front post half double. This is front post double. And this is interesting because it almost creates like a, I don't know if you can see as I turn it like that, but it almost creates a, a zigzag texture. So, um, yeah, I think you could still class that as ribbing, but it's, it's a bit of a funny angle. So that's really everything I wanted to, to discuss. I think I've probably talked longer than I meant to, but I think it's really helpful for you to understand what you want your rib stitch to achieve. And once you do, it helps you make a much more informed decision if you want to use it. Say you want to swap out a stitch that is used in a pattern, go your own way, say you're freestyling it. Just understanding what you're gonna get with each is really helpful. And if in doubt, make a swatch. So I hope you found that useful. Uh, if you want to find me to ask any questions, my uh, website is doradoes.co.uk. Have a look there. I'll pop some links uh, to all the patterns I've shown just so you can have a closer look if you want to follow up on those. I'll pop them all in the comments. So thank you very much for watching. Big thanks to Hannah and Veronica for organising the Garment Summit again this year. I really appreciate being here.